Hey, welcome back to Easy to Spell, where the name's Easy to Spell, and uh, somebody messed it up anyway. Um, I want to start out with a big thank you to uh, Sirenscape. I, I think they are uh, providing all the awesome sounds and everything that we've been using. There's a link to them in our description, because uh, an epic game needs epic sounds. Um, and we really appreciate all the ambiance and music they kind of provide and give us a chance to really immerse ourselves in the game. Which, Which last wow. week we left off uh, a lot of, I think, housekeeping, literally. Um, you guys were given a house within the settlement of Harlan's Landing, kind of in exchange for having set off, recovered the few scouts that you were able to, um, making that sur the surrounding area just a little bit more livable. Um, I guess kind of starting to put down roots as a group. Um, a lot of kind of fiddling around around about town. You guys had about a week as you were waiting for a response from the nearby settlement of Falks as to whether or not they were going to be able to kind of help provide everybody with food and um, support your settlement as uh, your sponsor city of Gormand um, figured out a way to get supplies to you since their main shipping route had been compromised by the young Kraken that you had encountered in episode one that had torn apart the Aegis. Um, kind of now with those basic precautions and setups underway, a um, little bit of exploration around town, discussing with the townsfolk, things that had gone on, um, witnessing the exile of Elrond, the apparent uh, Nalbarundian spy uh, that had been caught. Uh, you spent the last week putting down said roots and preparing to set off on your current uh, mission as your way to you know, earn your keep, uh, or longhouse, I should say, here in Harlan's Landing. Uh, that quest, which is to kind of explore and really start mapping out the, this continent of Artos, um, which beyond the small footholds that the uh, three main settlements here have made, no real progress has kind of come about in mapping out the actual land itself. Um, it's this morning um, with your equipment on hand, uh, gathering up, passing out the gates of Harlan's Landing into this some semi wastelandy area surrounding it, the clear cut forests uh, that have been used to not only construct the city, but uh, gather up the main export of Harlan's Landing, which is the ironwood trees, the magically infused trees in, that can be found within the surrounding wood. Um, gear and tow, your hirelings left at home, uh, going to begin to set off uh, into the woods. Uh, at this point, I'm assuming, uh, as usual, uh, Raven is kind of leading the pack to an extent. Um, and I'm going to kind of leave this with you guys as you start begin setting into the woods of the direction you want to go and how you want to kind of approach this task you have. All right, so what's this game plan? Well, I think we just need to scout it out a little bit, but uh, maybe we should pick a direction. Well, maybe uh, maybe we should head over to, towards uh, towards Folks just in that general direction and maybe pick up some supplies over there. I was saying is uh, running a little low. I mean, for Harlan's Landing. Or for us. Combination of factors, maybe. How do we want to map, though? Do we want to just follow the coastline and so we have something to map to, or do we want to go here to Fox? Well, I mean, Straight if line. we're... If you do a puzzle, I mean, the easiest places are to start are the edges. I think that's a great idea. Along the coast, then, to Falks. I agree. Let's go. Okay, so you guys head to do the whole west <laughs> along the coast. Um, on through. Uh, and this is a somewhat familiar... Uh, path. It's kind of the same route you took when you'd been shipwrecked uh, following the sinking of the Aegis. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and whoever's leading, uh, again, I'm assuming Raven, um, but let me know if I'm making assumptions here. I can get a survival check from you. You do have advantage uh, on this point just because it is an area you've traversed before. Okay. That would be a 19. 19. Um, great. So heading along, it's easy not to get lost, kind of following along the coast. Uh, as before, there are areas you have to kind of dip away into the trees, just thick underbrush and um, kind of larger cliffs that kind of begin to scale up in certain points, making it hard to follow exactly along the coastline. Um, there are currently pretty fresh uh, tracks with the 19 survival score, it's easy to tell this is the um, uh, the scouts that are the kind of trade, we'll call them tradesmen, the soldiers that had been sent to Fox and returned with goods. Um, beginning portion of your journey is pretty safe. Uh, let me see this really quick. No particular reason, don't worry about me. Um, as um, we're moving along, um, I guess, Kai, did you tell us about the stuff that you heard um, about the banished people? Uh, no, but uh, as we start heading off, I'll uh, I'll start talking about the rumors that I heard while I was in the in the uh, Giants Rest. Okay. Well, it makes sense that we have a an encampment of exiles. I mean, they're going to be drawn towards each other. I wonder, would it be worth to find where that is? I mean, we're going to stumble on them. Yeah, stumble on them eventually if we're mapping the whole place out. But, I mean, they're not causing any trouble right now. Right now, but if they grow large enough and we don't know where they're coming from, that could potentially be a problem in the future. Sounds like a future us problem. Plus, what would we do if we found them right now? Like, hey, you might be a problem in the future. Fuck you, die. No, I think it'd just no. be a good idea to let people know where they might be at, if if that were to come up. Sure, well, we'll mark it on the map when we, if we find them. Here's my thing. I feel like maybe some of those people aren't exactly just in being out there. I'm going to need a little more. Like, I don't know. I mean, you're starving. You're, you're going to take food eventually if you can't find it on your own. You get to a point, so like the uh, not necessarily the last guy that was that was out here, but people that, that that get kicked out. Some of them are being kicked out for food related purposes. They can't find their own food. They steal some, and for that they're banished. I feel like, huh, well, in my opinion, that's that's kind of shite. I mean, we all have a I, role, I, and if they're not upholding theirs. It kind of puts extra pressure on everybody else. Yeah, they got to yeah, contribute but... somehow. If you can't find your own food, maybe make a boat so somebody else can go fishing and find food. Or Right, no, no doubt about that. But what I'm saying is, if they are contributing to their portion, but they're not being able to feed themselves, and the rations that they're receiving aren't enough, I can't fault them on that. I guess I can agree to that. But do you know if that's the situation? No. Do you know if that I, is the I don't. Bad? I don't, but with the situation at hand, I, there's a strong inkling that there has been that. Sure, I get I mean, it. We're short out, on food, but it, if one person's short on food, everybody's short on food. I don't think we're short in one person because fuck them. If somebody's pulling their weight, we're all divvying up food, right? Sure. So I don't know. I mean, I mean your base point is right. There could be some shitty people out there. But maybe maybe not necessarily that, but just an example. Sure. But again, I think it's all conjecture at this point. We'll deal with them right. when and if we find them. I, I don't think it's a it's a forward upfront thing we need to deal with. In my opinion. I'm with you. As we're moving along, I just want to kind of keep an eye out for any markings on trees or something that might potentially lead to some safe hold for them. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. Kind of be in line as you're scouting. How, uh, just out of curiosity, how far ahead of the group are you scouting? Uh, are you just kind of leading the group, not getting 
just kind of so leading over. since we're just trying to map things out. Okay. Sans group. Perfect. Um, and I got Hi. a 15. T. Perfect. Uh, going this direction, there's not really anything that uh, has drawn out to your... I appreciate whoever drew on the map the directions. I just saw that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> For the YouTube channel, that's not showing. Somebody has doodled on our group map northeast southwest because uh, <laughs> early on there was a couple of situations where I was giving backwards directions because I don't know how maps work. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you you don't see any markings that are on uh, the path. Um, first half of the day goes by pretty uneventfully. Uh, the you guys continue um, for the second half of the day. Uh, on, uh, sorry, doing some math in my head. It is about uh, four to five days um, of like hard march to get to Falks. Um, probably closer to a week uh, taking time and um, like just kind of crudely scratching, like sketching your directions and really paying attention to like the surrounding area. Um, we'll call it an even week. Um, but your first half of the day goes by, and cool. We can say actually kind of lines up nicely for a week for me. Um, yeah, for the first half of the day, no real events, no threats or anything come up. Um, go ahead and make another survival check for the second half of the day. Is this one at advantage? Oh uh, yeah, this one's the first two days worth of checks will be at advantage because that that'll put you about where you've traversed before. Okay, uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, continuing on. Um, uh, still nothing that seems too crazy. If you can go ahead and make another perception check for me here as well. And are we walking in view? Of the ocean, like we can see the coast, right? Uh, yes, uh, for the most part. There are a few moments that you have to cut away from it just due to really dense underbrush, unless you guys want to kind of carve your way through the wood there. Uh, whatever, um, whatever's easiest. Mine. I'd like to watch uh, to see if we have any debris floating past that might indicate that other ships are also not making it. If anything. Uh, yeah, if you want to make a perception check for me as well. I rolled an then... eight, by the way. You rolled an eight? Yeah. Okay. Not so. going to do much better. Oh, unless I do. Uh, it's a 15. 15? Okay. You're continuing along. Um, there are two things that we're going to go into. Um, one is... Uh, or Elton, kind of about uh, three quarters of the way through the day, so halfway through the second half of your march, um, you do see there are a couple um, pieces of uh, loose board um, in what appear to be a crate or two that have kind of are kind of brushed up, caught in in over like a low overhanging branch, um, just off the beach. We stop and try and I obviously not going to identify a board, but maybe open a crate, see if I can see where this came from. Uh, yeah, that's uh, pulling it up. Um, it's pretty easy. You have to wade out into the water till about waist height to get to it, but it's easy enough to tell. Um, cracking it open, um, it is marked with the brand of the Aegis. Um, and so just some drift that got caught. Um, the crate itself um, has uh, like two bags of really just at this point rotted like grains that have been sitting in the water. Um, there are also a quiver of arrows and a few daggers. I'll, um, I'll pull the arrows out if they look useful. But if um, they've been like, warped or... Actually, you know what? I'll hand them to Raven because I don't know if they're fucking useful. Uh, oh, Raven, you get these. Uh, some of them are like uh, pretty warped in their current state. Um, they're not particularly useful, but all the arrowheads are still good. Um, a little bit of rust that could be cleaned off, but you you effectively you get fifteen usable arrowheads. 
yeah. um, that you'd be able to use to fashion more uh, arrows later. And then I'm going to go Vala with your passive perception. Uh, you see kind of off, off in the distance as y'all uh, stand on the beach, kind of watching Raven dragging this bat right out. Uh, you notice that just on the horizon in um, kind of an oddly like focused spot, you see just a dark storm cloud that's hanging, um, the occasional like lightning strike, and it's way off in the distance, not anywhere close to you. Um, you get to spend a few minutes kind of resting and catching your breath, going through the stuff, check, removing the arrowheads. You see that this uh, cloud is moving, and it's move like moves against the wind. Other clouds in the area are going one direction, and it pushes a different way. And um, in what direction is it traveling? Uh, it seems to be going kind of uh, 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 do like a northwest, and it'll kind of turn slowly. It, it's going like northwest, parallel to the coast. Did you have to look okay. at the map? Angularly away from us. <laughs> yeah, like uh, parallel. Actually, the direction you guys are going, you guys are going northeast or northwest up along the coast, and the clouds are also kind of moving northwest. Um, not necessarily mirroring mirroring you, but passing in that direction. The the, the dark cloud is going northwest, or the sorry, dark the, clouds are the uh, regular clouds that are just moving I'm more naturally are northeast. probably going like more south. Yeah, south okay. southeast to, more towards you. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be moving closer, but it's pretty like taking that second to look at it. It's very similar to the storm that started brewing over the. A creature that attacked your ship uh, on your way to Artos. Um, it appears to have resumed hunting and patrolling. Raven. Yeah. Do you recall the storm cloud um, that took down our ship and began a brewing? I know you were up in the the uh, Raven's Nest. Ha, I see what you did there. Yes, I do remember it. Um, does that one look similar? I'm going to point out that. Okay. Once it's pointed out, that's it's pretty easy for you to identify. Yeah, it, it does actually. And I mean, it seems to be moving about the same speed too. That doesn't seem natural. And it seems to be going in the opposite direction of the wind. Hmm. Well, I believe nest, whatever. Crow's nest. Mm. Well, it's a crow nest or... now. Hmm. I like it. Okay. Do you guys continue on? Yeah. Uh, the daggers. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Does anybody, anybody make use of these? Or I guess somebody back at camp probably could if we can't. Yeah. It, there are like four functioning daggers. Some of them were like rotted through the hilt uh, or have rusted really quickly. They were like, seems as though they may have been initially shoddy make. Um, but there's four like higher quality, like good. Uh, hunting knives, daggers, for the purpose of rules in your inventory. Okay. I'll take okay, those four. Okay. There you are. Um, I'll hold on to these three unless somebody else wants one. Also, while we're traversing through, uh, <laughs> Kai is going to be keeping a lookout for anything for potential brews. Brews. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say the same thing for, for medicine. Excellent. Give me... A, give me one second to find my rules. Need this. Okay. Uh, go ahead, each of you. Um, David, go ahead and make a, either a nature check or a medicine check for either of you. I consider brewing a medicine related skill. Six. <laughs> what was that? Six. Okay. Um, not a whole lot beyond like you find a couple trimmings of uh, like hop vines. That you'd have to try, but like nothing too, nothing too crazy. And twenty-two. Twenty-two. Go ahead and roll a d10 for me, Rachel. All right. Four. Um. Uh, you find. Uh, at a certain point, um, this is uh, another mushroom that you find kind of growing like plates 
um, up along um, one of the trees kind of nearby, uh, the, like a shelf mushroom. And uh, the spores kind of, the bottom part of it, like the sheathing, it seems to have, it looks almost feathered. Um, and it is a white kind of mushroom. And the underneath that feathered part is like bright yellow um, with t- hints of red. Um, not a whole lot of other, like anything medicinal, but this is something that you think could potentially be edible. Um, you saw there was a squirrel that was like chewing on a corner of one of them, um, which kind of implies it's not poisonous to at least squirrels. So it's probably not poisonous to other hu- like humanoids. Um, it, it just, it's interesting. It stands out a lot kind of against its surroundings. I'm gonna I'm gonna collect some of it as we go. Yeah. So you have uh, enough that would constitute like one of these or two of these mushrooms, we'll call them. Okay. Uh, Has anybody been like jotting down surroundings, landmarks? I mean, oh, I yes. don't have pencil paper. Okay. And don't we have our cartographer with us? No, he's he, back no, he no. stayed. Yeah, he stayed back. That's a he can he can take. Uh, we kind of talked about this. Uh, Raven has the a background that gives it like he has a good memory for the surrounding area and like natural landmarks and distancing and stuff. Um, so based on rough sketches that you as a group take, paired with Raven's descriptions and Corrin's cartography skills, uh, you can put together pretty pretty decent maps from that. But it also won't force him to go into like combat situations. Perfect. Yeah, I've been sketching out as the um, as the Vala do. So I guess we'll continue on. Continue on. Again, the second half of the day goes by pretty uneventfully, uh, but you do start getting into the evening. Um, kind of the sun begins to set you go into the twilight um, but anybody who wants to can go ahead and make a perception check for me as you kind of get into the evening 16 16 uh, uh, 17 23 Unnatural one. Okay. Um, well, primarily you. Um, and this is just like that storm has been constantly brewing on the horizon. Um, kind of keeping an eye on it, just given your previous experience with it. Um, you see that it, at first glance, looks like it's grown. And Raven, for, for you, it seems like it looks like the storm's gotten bigger. Um, But Vala, you're able to kind of pick out as the sun sort of sets behind it, giving you a little bit more dimension to the clouds and what you can see, is you can kind of see that original storm cloud, um, which seemed pretty big and looming off on the horizon. It is superimposed where behind it, a distant ways away, there is a second storm cloud moving kind of in conjunction with it against the natural wind. But it is much, much larger. Sunset yeah. three this time of night, huh? Yeah. Beautiful time. Yeah. Just wish we didn't have doom on the on the horizon, you know. No, what are you talking about? I think about? that the, that doom is growing larger. Or there there is more to it. Do you not Did see we... it? See what? The sunset? Yeah. I just said it was pretty. It doesn't look doom esque. Never mind. Um, Look further north. Further north, the clouds kind of part a little bit and just perfectly catching the like the peak of a wave off in the distance. The sun is reflected into your eyes. <laughs> I mean, it's still pretty, I guess. Um, you guys kind of continue on to the night. Um, are you wanting to kind of try to force march and push through? 
Um, or are you going to want to be setting up camp at kind of a normal time? If we're doing this for a long period of time, which I think we are, probably want to set up camp and get comfortable with it. There's no reason to rush. Yeah. Um, and then in that case, you guys are able to settle in. It's easy enough to find a campsite kind of close to the coast um, where you're not off into the woods, but you're kind of sheltered. Um, as you start to set up camp, um, Vala and Raven, since your attention has been called to it, you see the two storm clouds get closer and closer and closer until they kind of seem to merge. And then like over the, the next hour or so, they just dissipate until they're like no longer on the like list on the horizon. Didn't we have a ship that was supposed to be coming into uh, into Fox, a supply ship? I think they did say something about that. They were going to try to send word to send in the supply ship to Folks instead of Harlan's landing. Whether or not words got back that far yet, who knows? I it's only been either you that want you can make a, a nature survival check here. Twenty four. Okay, that's no other okay. thing is going to be um, the like positioning of the clouds and everything kind of thinking about what you were shown from your basic map and the distances and everything. Um, this is not nearly far enough north to actually be intercepting a ship that might be coming into Falks. Um, it was odd. You don't think that's necessarily what happened. And a ship traveling like from um, Gormand to Falks would have, would have taken much longer. You don't think that this was necessarily your supply ship having been destroyed. Yeah, I think they they mentioned that they were going to send word back, but that wouldn't have been enough time for that to get back and, and start heading this way. I mean, we were on that ship for a long time. Do you think those clouds are are in about the same area where we wrecked? Uh, I'd say pretty similarly, based on your 24. Was that, uh, and also, was that survival or nature? That was survival. Your... That was survival? Yeah. Um, and I had a 21 nature check. You that. had a 21 nature. Okay. okay. Um, kind of piecing together the, the smaller storm meeting with the larger storm. Uh, Raven kind of filling in that it, it couldn't be the same. It's not the same like supply route it would have been. Um, thinking back to the creature you encountered, um, and what you saw of it, and then now given this, um, you realize that though it was large and terrifying, was also a juvenile animal. And a juvenile animal would have a parent. Oh! What? Oh, wait. I... How much do you know of, uh, hold on, what were they called again? Uh, the squid people. The uh, Oh, with that, uh, you would know, um, yeah, with the 21, the, they're Krakens. The Krakens. Uh, Rachel couldn't afford. You would only really know about from, like, religious texts that you had had at home. Uh, okay. Like, they're a legendary creature that hasn't been seen at Thermon for hundreds if not thousands of years well Raven um, do you think potentially the Kraken that we saw was not a full grown adult and if it were to occur with the brewing of a storm could be a smaller storm you see where I'm going with this I mean, I see where you're going, but I sure hope that wasn't a, a, an infant, if that's what you're implying here. I mean, that direction or the other is where I'm, my thoughts fall. But I, I feel like the features were just round enough to have the visage of youth. Man, if that's, if that's the case, I mean, these things haven't been seen 
mean, that's the first time I've ever even seen one. And if we've got two on our hands now, that's a bigger problem than what we were even expecting. I think we should share this with, with the others. I agree. Well, should we set up our camp and get some sleep? Yes. Yes. So we set up camp and share our thoughts with 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 Kaya and 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 Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what you do. And fill them in on what you've been going over. Yeah. So I'm already laid down in a bedroll. What you're trying to tell me is there's a bigger squid beast out there? Or a smaller one. Yes. But I believe at least two of them. Oh, great. That's just what we need. What a good time to be on land. Good thing I don't plan on going back across. And whatever's across, hell, they're going to have a hell of a time making it here, at least. I'm not suggesting this. Landing. I'm not suggesting yeah. this, but it'd be a hell of a lot of meat if you could take one of those things down, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And have sushi for yes, a long would. time. For a long time. You never How run out of pen ink, I can tell you that much. I, I, I wonder if you could brew anything with the ink. Mmm. We'll have to give it a try. Let's uh, yeah. let's not do that. Might be a pipe dream, yeah. <laughs> it might be poison. <laughs> Could have been worse than that last batch. Apparently, apparently I'm good at making that. You're telling me. I'm good at fine-tuning, all right? I'm not good at creating, so you're going to have to give me some time. <laughs> I fear oh. I'll be long gone by the time you've had enough time to come over the clean brew. Especially if you're the test subject. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll craft a batch of Tarlay's brew. And after about two or three batches, I'll make it better, I promise. I'd like to see that. Hell, I'd just like to hear you say it with Tarly in the room. <laughs> I'll tell it to his face. <laughs> He'll be happy to hear it. Well, your funeral? Better brew is better brew. <laughs> Can't argue you may that. not believe it. All right, well, shall we get some rest? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. Settle in. Who? We could say you guys can are able to split the watches into uh, two even groups, if you'd prefer. I will take uh, the watch with watch. a relative. Are we going to offset? So, like... I would like second watch. Yeah, it'll kind of it'll it'll kind of overlap. So, one person will like the first and last person will have like two hours alone, and then it offsets. So, first and second person have two like uh, overlap for half. Second, and third overlap for half. Third and fourth overlap for half. I'll go first. I'll go third. I'll go second. Kai, when are you going? No, I'm just kidding. You're going for it. <laughs> All right. So, numero uno, go ahead and give me a perception check. It's Vala. Yes. That is uh, eight plus seven is 15. 15. Um, let me let's make camp for the evening um, everybody kind of settling in you have some discussions so these probably aren't tents I imagine you guys are just kind of bedrolls around a fire this is uh, yeah, a generic campsite that I've set up. Um, oh no, there's a map. There's um, a map. This is just 
reference. We're not necessarily going into combat for anything. Um, he says now. I, got, I it just I put this together just to have a generic <laughs> camp reference <laughs> sheet. Um, Trying always high with these ones. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, Vala, you're keeping your watch, and everybody settles in pretty quickly. Uh, you know, Kai hits the ground immediately and falls asleep. Um, Raven or Relton, I imagine, pretty similarly, being rough and rugged uh, adventures. Um, take a little bit longer, but they're able to conk out pretty easily. Um, Volier, watching. You got an 18 on your perception? 15. 15, okay. Um, cool. Um, you're sitting, watching, keeping watch. About your, the first hour after everybody's fallen asleep kind of goes by. You look one direction, and at least there. You lean against the tree the other direction and kind of looking back to your left uh, the woman next to you just goes what are you watching for? Um, And as you see there's a woman who is leaning against just sitting against the tree next to you Uh, she has kind of deep green skin Um, her fingernails and toenails seem to be made of bark um She's wearing what seems like just a, like a li- light poncho that is just woven of weaves, leaves, and vines. Weaves. Woven, woven of weaves. Um, woven of leaves and vines. Uh, her hair uh, is long grass that grows from the top of her head. Um, and her eyes are like polished wooden orbs. And she's not like looking at you, just as you've been kind of like you kind of pan and look around. She seems to just be panning and looking with you. Uh, you now. No need to watch for me. I'm here. Where are you from? I'm not familiar with your kind. Are you the ones we've been warned about? I'm not sure who you've been warned about, or who you are. Who are you? Um, well, I'm part of the forest. You've you seem to have made a home at the base of my home. And she kind of leans back into the tree and just kind of falls through it. And you, looking around, she just, like, leans back out and is sitting on the other side of the tree next to you and is kind of looking around more towards the actual camp itself and she goes what are they doing? Are they dead? They're sleeping. What is sleeping? It's it's similar to you have squirrels here, yes? (laughs) Yes, we do. They tickle. When, When squirrels Um, when they lie down in a a hole for all of winter. It's very similar to what they're doing, but they do it every night. Seems imprudent. It is, it it is rest. I suppose, are you... tire very easily. It seems like it would just waste so much time. Are you on your way to meet the others? Oh, we are trying to find our way around this land. We know not much of it. I know not more than what lies beyond my tree and my grove, but as long as you uh, don't try to hurt me, I don't see any why. I don't know why Father warned us about you. You seem kind. I didn't like the fire earlier, but you did not cut from my tree, and so I suppose we're okay. 
It's, you see the, the fire off in the distance is kind of at a low burn, just the coals glowing red. And she does seem to tense up every time she looks over at it. Does every tree have a companion like you? Not every tree, just ones like this. And she taps an old, the old tree that you lean against. Um, and paying attention to it, you realize that like the bark on it, um, as she lays her hand uh, against it, seems unnaturally hard. Um, almost metallic. You know how hard it can be? These trees... Once they get to a certain age, me or one like me is given it to it. We care for them as best we can. The old ones, I guess my sisters, sleep is a good word. They sleep. This one's younger. As she touches the ancient tree. What, what happens when they die? When they what? When when they die, when they are no longer growing and living. I don't know. I've never known one to die. I've only known this one, and it is very much alive. I suppose that we might go to another. I think I might die if my tree died. If it was gone, I'd be gone but father would never let that happen to me. Who is father? He's the one who watches over us. He's the one that warned us about you. And your kind. He told us to stay away from all of you in your halls of tree and stone and those of you in the forest. I, I would very much like to meet your father. I don't think you would. He doesn't, that? Like, he doesn't like your kind very much. He hasn't liked your kind for a long time. You've not been here very long. You've been here forever. Maybe not you. You have such short lives. From what I'm told told we can outlast you but if we just wait father did seem irritated this time I wonder if there's something we've done that we do not know that we are doing something bad maybe it would be helpful if somebody would teach us you seem to be doing the right things. The the plants you took uh, were either dead or dying anyway. That's There's nothing wrong with consuming of the forest. Or were you, for your own fire, took wood that was had already fallen? That's fine. You did not cut trees or try to hurt me. It's nice to talk like this. I am I am very glad that we have been able to as well. Uh, I yeah. do I must warn you though that there are some of us who who may do harm without knowing that they are doing harm. Sorry, I'm checking something really quick. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, just rolling something. Um, doesn't terrify me at all. It's okay. <laughs> uh, and this was something I should have done earlier. That's when when he first saw her, but. Well then, uh, she kind of stands and kind of starts walking around your camp. She 
stands over and kind of looks down at Raven. She walks a little bit more and she looks down, like leaning over O'Relton, just watching. <laughs> she makes face backing. <laughs> this is long. Um, as she gets close to uh, Kaya, she looks down at him and her eyes kind of grow wide and she steps away. Uh, kind of turning back and coming back down and sitting back next to you against the tree. And just kind of sitting. What, uh, what was wrong with the last one? Something. He feels different. Cold. He's, quite... He's what? <laughs> Sorry. He's quite different. And he seems cold. I didn't like it. What is your name? Um, I don't have a name. Is there something I may call you? Whatever seems fine. I think Pecan sounds lovely. How do you uh, feel about that name? You, I, I missed that entirely. What? Pecan. Pecan? Asked if she liked the name Pecan. That seems very nice. Pecan. It's a fun word. Pecan. Pecan. Back in my home, it's a type of tree. I like that very much. Pecan in the pecan tree. And she reaches back and touches her tree again. <laughs> well, so what are you watching for? Other than me. I didn't know I was coming. I did not know you were coming, but I certainly was watching for you once you came. I was looking for anything that might try to hurt us. That's most things, in, at least in my grove, won't try to hurt you unless you try to hurt them. Uh, we have I run should... into a few things that have been um, a bit scary on our trip. Many things that are, I hear are very scary. Some of the animals talk. And they say that there's strange trees that look different and act different and are different. The people in the forest are apparently not as nice as you. And some of my friends from that way haven't been to visit. She gestures kind of towards where you guys came from. Um, but that happens sometimes. They can go a while without seeing me. Well, I'll let you go back to sleep. And she steps back into the tree uh, behind you. <laughs> and then Fala is going to pinch herself and make sure she's actually awake. Seem to be awake. All right. Um, who was on second watch? That was Relton. Okay. I'll, I'll keep my watch as best as I can until the Relton wakes up, and then uh, I'm going to try and tell him some stuff. <laughs> so, I'm ready to hear some stuff. Um, now don't think me crazy, right? But I think I've had another run-in with um, one of the creatures that occupies these lands, similar to Alessandra. Oh, like a uh, fairy girl. Yes, but this no one... No tear, though, right? No tear. This one seems to be natural from this land. Um, and she occupies this tree. This tree? Yes. And I'm going to, like, point out the ironwood tree. Okay. Sounds oh, like well, you found a little bit a, of a burning bush. Right, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Ooh, uh, 15. 15. Um, 
you see it kind of looking over towards the tree. Um, you kind of look up into the branches and sitting on one of the high branches, you see the same woman. Um, go ahead and make a uh, wisdom saving throw for me. Oh, fun. What I... Missed with me. As I rolled this for ah. you using your... Uh, okay. Wisdom. And you vastly surpass it. Five. Five. Um, she is a beautiful woman. And... Uh, have, like... She seems familiar to you. And every fiber of your being just says that you have to like protecting her um like is important like if she needs anything you're the man for it um gone full simp <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's your charm she doesn't have any con- like but you don't feel controlled you just feel like yeah, you can trust her. You should protect her. Um, and if she needs help from you, anything that you're able to kind of offer, um, you should do. Uh, let's see. This young lady, then. As you point at her, she goes, <gasps> and then rolls into the tree. Um, like, just like leaning back into the tree and just bat- vanishes into it. Uh, as she disappears from your sight, um, you no longer, like, feel the urge to help and protect, like... Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to sit down for a second. That, that was her, though? Yes, that is her. Um, I've named her Pecan. Oh, well, that's cute. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know what to do with this information. Um. Really quick, go ahead and make a Arcana check for me. If you're not proficient, just a general intelligence check. Same, same. A natural 20, though. You absolutely recognize, like, a magical effect that was on you. You can tell it was when you saw her, it, like, triggered. Um, And it's, uh, yeah, with a natural 20, that's your your guess with with a creature like that. It wasn't that she cast a spell on you. It's just like a natural survival like ability that she possesses. Just the where way she is, just the way she is. It's, there's like a mag- <laughs> an ethereal, magical like magic quality to her overall look. Oh, get it together, Aurelian! Come on. Are you right? Yeah, I think I just she got like this charm about her. Uh, a magical charm, obviously, and I. Just I was say, got to me a little bit. You, but I mean, <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Would you like me to stay up with you for a little while? I mean, just to the end of shift, and then I think Raven can handle it. What? What else did she say, though? She um. Did she, she just watch me. over this portion of the forest, or that particular tree, or all the forest? I think that all of the ironwood trees have individuals like her, and these trees don't die. Um, But on the hap stance that they do, the she would die with it. She's a tree soul. Yes. Um, Calm the tree soul. And keep that in mind when you think about our settlement and anything you might speak to her about our settlements. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, and the trees I was chopping down the other day. Do I remember if any of the trees I was chopping down happened to be ironwood trees? Uh, You did not have the tools to be chopping down an ironwood tree. When an ironwood tree is found, it requires like a special set of um, tools to be brought out. Like People actually have to come out and chisel into it. It usually takes a long time. It's like carving marble. Well, it's a load off my conscience, at least, that I haven't taken any of them out yet. 
she was um, very adamant on us ensuring that we uh, do not collect things that are still living and kill them. For example, I collected those mushrooms that were, you know, living off of dead things, and um, we we collected brush wood. What? Can she hear us? Yes. Well, then keep it down, huh? Our edelments say, your ushroom maze. I told her of them. Oh, well, why'd you tell me not to tell her? Not to... Not to... Not to tell her... A portion, not everything. You know, maybe we talk about this later, huh? We're clearly not getting anywhere now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless she has something else she wants to talk about, I will sit quietly until Raven wakes up. Um, at a certain point during uh, you, the overlap of your, the two of you, your watch, um, Pecan uh, leans out of Whatever tree you're laying, it doesn't actually have to be her tree. She just steps out of it. She sits down next to Orelton. She kind of wraps her arms around your arm. Uh, and, hello. Yeah, sh- uh, and the magical charm settles in again. Oh, I don't get to make another save? Nope, it is just 24 hours. I guess I will wrap my arm around her then. And it's very much like uh, she, based on like Bali, your conversation with her, you can tell she is old, even if she might be the younger, like one of the the younger ones in the forest. Like she is an old creature. Um, and she is, from the outside, you can see it is a very magical effect that is just making a relative take a super protective like stance like uh, she's kind of leaning against him and he is just shielding her with his body against anything that might come and she is pretending to sleep <laughs> she's trying and she is the entire time making the same face that when Orelton was looking down at her uh, or when she was looking down at Orelton like he was making the snoring face That's she's doing the exact same except every now and then her eyes open and she looks over at you Bala and like smiles and then goes back into it. <laughs> she, she looks at me one time. I'm going to give her a little wink. Um, oh, this, this is great. <laughs> Molly, your portion uh, uh, of the watch kind of comes to an end. We roll into Raven. Um, as you're kind of roused before you wake up, she uh or Elton kind of ducks away from you and like back to her tree uh, and you see she like instead of just sinking into it she like grabs onto it and like almost glides up it she's kind of making a climbing motion but when she reaches up like slides up the tree yeah um and kind of vanishes into the the branches and as she leaves your sight you feel that magic charm kind of fade slide again Hey. Hmm, how's it going? Not too bad. Um, point of order, I guess. Vala met a tree soul. The young lady that lives in this tree. And I'll point to the tree I'm leaning against. Oh, so, okay. I imagine she'll be back out in a minute. Don't freak out. Interesting. But, uh... Not that unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, we've seen <laughs> some weird shit since we got here. Yeah. Probably should have been less surprised now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to assume that everything went okay with that. She seems nice. Yeah, she seems great. Very non-hostile. My favorite quality. All right. Oh, also something about if you chop down ironwood trees... They die. The people in them. 
Oh well, yeah. Um, not gonna lie, I, I've I don't think I'll have that problem. I'm not too happy with the way things are back home, you know. You mean the tree chopping? Yeah. Yeah, I mean I get that, but I don't think I can live like this. And I'll point to my uh, bedroll. Well, I mean, the there's there's an extent that we can go to, but I think we need to watch that and make sure we're not taking more than what nature has given us. Or replenish conservation, all that yeah. other mumbo jumbo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can get behind that. Raven, you kind of look uh, up above Orelton's head and Pecan is standing on one of the branches, except she's standing where she's upside down. Um, her hair and everything are like holding to her shoulders as if she was just standing upright. Her feet are on the bottom of the branch. Uh, and she has her arms crossed and is kind of giving Orelton kind of a look. Orelton, uh, you looking up, feel that need to protect her again, but she just looks kind of disappointed in you now. What's up? I don't see anything wrong with living like this. Oh, I can't live in a tree. You're more than welcome to. You could try. And I will say, at this point, you... I try really and push like, myself back into the tree. Like, you could try. And then she kind of push. It's not like that silly, but you could live in a tree. <laughs> and I could you, try. Like, yeah, you're not... It's just one of those... Part of the magical charm is you're like... Yeah. And you are now seriously considering, for the moment being, living in a tree. Like, it's not a bad idea, being a tree person. I'll try and climb the tree. Uh, give me a, an athletics check. What What are you doing? Hold up. I got, I got this. For a 15. 15? Yeah, you scramble up the tree. It's a, You find a, a branch that's big enough to kind of hold your weight, which is funny because it's a branch that's only like this big. <laughs> but it is like it's like a steel beam. Huh. And you sit and you're able to get kind of comfortable. You loop your tail around it. I'll sit like uh so my back's against the trunk and my feet run along the branch mm. and just like fold my arm and kind of try to nestle down in. Uncomfortable, but like it's reasonable. And yeah. She looks at you, Raven, she goes, I agree with you. Conservation's key. She leans into the tree and vanishes. Hi. I look at Raven and be like, okay. I said that. Pretty sure that was me. No. Yeah. The yeah, magical charm effect wears off as she fades into the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're just up in the tree. So uh, you just going to stay up there all night? or? No, what the hell was I doing? Oh, oh, you're, trying to, you're trying to impress somebody? I don't know, man. There's this magical aura she's got and I just I'm not uh, me not me when I, she's out here I will my, point my, out when you looked at her no magical effect my dad right. talked about that same feeling with my mom no 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 not like that just somebody's got to be looking out for her you know what I mean yeah that's what he always said I'm not trying to fuck the tree raven <laughs> Look, I, I don't pass judgment. We're good. Not. <laughs> okay. I believe you. Go. Sit down, pseudo angry. <laughs> you climb back down out of the tree. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Oh, God, no. Five. <laughs> you fall out of the tree. It's <laughs> like, you go, you. Uh, kind of get, when you say you sit down angrily, like you kind of shuffle off the tree and like let go. You had just climbed farther than you really expected and just collapse in a heap on the ground. You don't take any damage. You're not that high up. I'll but stand back up. I immediately run over to you. Injury. Are you all right? Not a fucking word. Not a, not a fucking word. <laughs> Are you okay? Like, can I help? I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, well, let's go. Let's go sit down, man. And I'll go back to what I assume is no longer a fire. Mm hmm. It is fully burnt out at this point. Okay, but the night's pretty temperate. Like, okay. Um. Uh, can you? I always wondered this. Um. Can you see right now? I may see you. I mean, but can you like see that tree over there? And I'll point to a tree that's like sixty feet away. No, it's pretty dark. 
You want to? Do you want to see it? Yeah, it's a tree, right? Does it look like this one? I mean, kind of, but it's kind of nice to see that far. I mean, if you're asking me if I want to be able to see in the dark, yes, but trees I'll, a tree is a tree is a tree. I'll go ahead and cast dark vision on the world. Yeah. The world springs into black and white. You get pretty clear layout of depth, and you, know, you can't see color, but that's pretty cool. You can see in the dark. Yeah, this is what I see every night. Wait, can uh, you see colors during the daytime? Yeah, yeah, it's... Oh. Okay, I was gonna say, that would suck if you couldn't. I couldn't be this chipper if I just saw grays all day. Yeah, no joke. Which, I just, I'm curious about something, Mike. Mm -hmm. Because he has dark vision. Yeah. Is your thing in, like, just automatically works? Yeah, it, I mean, I believe so. Let me just double check, but... Yeah, double check, just give me a yes or no. Because I feel like a key component... Yeah, it just says you touch a willing creature to grant it the ability to see in the dark. Yeah, yeah but I'm talking about your other one, That now that he has dark vision. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, sorry. Uh, don't you? I could sworn. <laughs> you know, I, I can just actually pull it up on my... Here, my here. Do you... Oh, yeah, the sorry. Went out and you guys are in dark. Um... I lied. Uh, Dragonborn have dark vision. Oh. oh. That's my bad. So. so we can. <laughs> <pull it back. laughs> oh, man. I can see that tree. Uh, yeah. So, an interesting thing, because because the fire went out, uh, this might actually significantly impact our uh, RP here. Um, Raven, we're going to say that in your sleeping bag, you had like pulled it up over your head, like just in your sleep because people were talking. Uh, as Orelton, as you wake up Raven for his shift, um, you like pull back the sleeping bag, fires out, it's dark, so you need dark vision to be able to see or to set a light. Uh, he, his sleeping bag is empty. Him. He's oh, not yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah. I got what you're saying. And that was the weird thing because there was the lump, but you pulled, back, pulled it back and there's nothing there. Put my hand where his head should be. Hey, stop! His face. Stop! Get off me, <laughs> dude! I'll poke him in the side Wait, of the head. Stop! Stop! <laughs> You're invisible. Yeah, I know. Why? I said I was good in the dark. That's real good, man. Like this is an every night thing. Yeah, go get. Stop poking me. <laughs> and I'm gonna get up and out of my bag and step like ten feet away from him. I'll walk closer to him and keep poking him. I'm just gonna step around where he can't. <laughs> yeah, if you want to start me. making, if you want to continue poking, go ahead and make attack rolls at disadvantage. Trying to poke an invisible creature. <laughs> poke one. Okay, yeah, Raven. Oh. I, like Mike, I realize that is incredible. Yeah, I that completely as soon forgot as it gets about that. Dark. As soon as it gets dark, you just are invisible to anybody. <laughs> Sorry, D&D Beyond is taking forever to roll, so I'm going to do it all natural. Uh, 15 at disadvantage. Yeah, that hits. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> gotcha. You, you hear, Got like, you, as he's invisible, you hear a branch, uh, like a twig snap, and you just poke him. <laughs> gotcha, <laughs> right. Stop. Sorry, it's just too much fun. I get, so, I get it, but. This is just, uh, you've had this since birth thing, or what? Yeah, it's just it comes natural to me. Man, I want to be able to do that. I mean, I get like the black scales and against the black, but it's not as cool as that. Yeah, so uh, let's just say I'm I'm really good in the dark. So if we need something, let me know. We'll poke him again. Attack this village. Ooh, a natural twenty and a sixteen for a. 21. Yeah, that hits. That's you do the whole like you go out to poke with poke his eyes with two fingers. And he goes to block and you just shift and poke him in each eye with one finger. And you God, damn it. Not not good enough in the dark. I'm gonna pull out my sh my quarter staff and trip him. 
<laughs> this is gonna be let's do an attack roll here. That's... That would be not gonna hit. It's a twelve. <laughs> Uh, I'll say it does hit like you swing your quarter staff into the back of his knees and Arelton just tanks it. <laughs> Good effort. All right, all right, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Anything you guys want to go over in the course of your watch together? I think the invisibility thing is pretty much it. Uh, you go through. Relton, you go to bed. Raven, you go to wake up Kaya. Uh, Kaya, do you have dark vision? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are kind of gently roused from your sleep. You open your eyes. Everything's grayscale. Nothing's there. Kaya, wake up. From the, from. The... <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and make an attack roll at disadvantage. Oh wow! Not terrible. Uh. Maybe 15. you should have lit the fire. What was it? Fifteen. Yeah, that hits. Fifteen hits. Uh, well, that's strike, an all out punch. Yeah. yeah, you strike him full in the face and deal zero damage. Yep. <laughs> so it's one of those like, uh, Raven, you're like bent over and you wake him up. Wakes up, you see his eyes go wide as he looks around and then he just like flails, catching you in the jaw and just his hand kind of like limply falls around you just with how little muscle Kaya has built up. Oh, um, God damn it. You get gently poked and take no damage. <laughs> what are you doing? What I'm going to step doing? away. Where I, are okay, you? Hold on. Hold on. I know you can't see me. I know this is different. The lights are out one second and I'm going to go over I... and throw a log on the fire. That's <laughs> <laughs> you with your incredible ranger skills. Rouse the fire up. And as it, uh, the fire kind of blooms, color kind of returning to your sight, Kai, you see Raven standing over the fire, like tending to it. What the fuck is that? Look, it's just something I can do at night, okay? In the dark. Anytime it's dark, I'm, I'm really good at staying hidden. Well, it'd be freaking nice to know that beforehand. <sighs> I'm sorry. You would catch my sturdy right hand if you would have fucking told me. Well, I hope I never catch your sturdy right hand again. Damn right. <laughs> Jesus. Um, you are covered in, like, starting to bruise poke marks. Yeah. From a <laughs> Relton poking you. Along with where you were my bruise from the tablet. <laughs> yep. And then when you, but when you were full punched in the face by Kaya, there's this, this blatantly bruise free. <laughs> All right, come sit down. Uh, all right. I'll just sleep. Not terrible. Good. To be honest. Well, uh, apparently we've got some uh, tree person around us right now. Um, she's very nice. I actually don't, for the point of order, I don't think I ever heard her name. I think I've said it. Okay. It's Pecan. Yeah, okay. we'll say that. Okay. Um, her name's Pecan, and she lives in that tree. And I'll point to the tree that El Relent climbed. Uh, you can make a perception okay. check if you want. Eight. Yep, it's tree. So I haven't... Um, I saw her for a moment... Oh, Relton's trying to get with her. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, but... Raven, you can make a perception check for me as well. Okay. Um, real quick, am I more than thirty feet from O'Relton right now? Uh, no, he's just on the kind of asleep on the ground, close to the fire. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, perception that was thirteen. Thirteen. You don't see anybody in the tree either. Okay. Tree people. Yeah, like a like a tree spirit. Um, I guess she protects the area around here. Mm. She seemed nice. Right. 
Sure. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem that weird, right? No, no, tree people. Doesn't seem weird at all. I mean, given everything we've gone through so far, seems kind of on par. Right, right, definitely. <laughs> I'm just gonna right. go through. Um, yeah. All right. Next bit of your rest like, kind of cleans up. You go to sleep. Uh, kind of you stay up. You have the last couple hours. Um, at one point during your like, you're kind of looking over, and every now and then you look to check on the people that are kind of camping around, like asleep around the ground, and you kind of passing back over. You see there is a small pile of berries on top of O'Relton's bag, like on him, and another couple that are just on top of uh, Vala's. And then there's like two that are just like set on top of Raven. There's, I kind of uh, look around for maybe some squirrels or something that are... Go ahead and make a perception check. 18. 18. Um, you see them, and you like look around and you look up towards the tree and you just see a foot like going up into the branches above. Like so fast that you're not a hundred percent sure if it was something you actually saw. They're not tree people. They're not tree people. I'm gonna go over and kind of Quietly take a look at the berries and see if they're actually something that I might be able to use in a brew. Um, Steal my berries? <laughs> might. Are you being stealthy about this? Are you sneaking over? Who do you go to steal I, berries off of? Quietly up to... How do I put this? somewhat stealthy like just to like not wake them up i, I wouldn't yeah, say go ahead, gonna... go ahead and make a stealth check and then uh who are you going up to natural one <laughs> who are you going up to uh who's closest to me uh, whoever's closest so we'll just do an odds and even odds uh, are odds and even yeah uh so between orelton and kaya you're not stealing from bala it's they uh, all, all three of them have berries. It's just Orelton and Vala have Raven. more berries than Raven. You mean Raven? Gotcha. Yeah. What did I say? Oh, Kaya. Okay. Kaya. I said Kaya. You said Kaya. Okay. My bad. Then, uh, I mean, honestly, whoever would be closer. So uh, you, you delegate that. Uh, Raven is closest to you. He has Raven, uh, it is. two berries sitting on his chest. Um, <laughs> you can go and, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you kind of lean in and you go to grab one and Raven kind of rolls over and you just grab his face. (laughs) (laughs) Raven, you are, this is partly because the fire has dimmed down. And so you're trying to grab berries off of an invisible person that moves in their sleep. uh, And you grab his face. Hold on. (laughs) What are you doing? Stop. My shift's over. I'm making sure you're still there. Oh my, I'm here. I'm here. Do you need me to stay up? No, but you got... I'm going to take these berries that are right next to you. What berries? These ones. And now I'm going to pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and make an arcana check with this. Or Natural one. Natural one. For all you know, the, the tree person that doesn't exist to try to poison the people that you're around. Uh, oh, Raven, as he picks them up, you immediately, like as a ranger, you immediately notice these are good berries. Oh, I don't know if I'd eat these. What? Those are perfectly um, fine. It appears somebody left enough good berries to make breakfast for the three of you, like for three of the four of you. You're perfectly fine to have those. Good berries are the ones that heal you, right? Yeah, they actually heal a point, and that's none of you. That's a upon waking up and finding good berries on your chest, you'll like you won't have to eat breakfast. It's, it saves you a ration. Well, I mean, if you're not gonna take them, just give them back. 
Whatever, and I'm just gonna roll back over. <laughs> David, you have two poisonous berries. <laughs> two, what I believe to be poisonous berries. Got it. Yes. Don't, Don't worry about them. adding to them to their your inventory. They disappear after a period of time. Vanish if you don't need Perfect. Them. Perfect. Anything else you're doing for your watch? Tree people. <laughs> you're hit in the forehead by an acorn. That was perfect timing. <laughs> uh, the rest of your watch goes kind of goes by. Um, everybody wakes for the day, uh, which that went on a long time. But that was probably the most fun I've had with just a round of watches in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh shit, elder or er, good berries, yeah. Wait, I wouldn't eat that. Why? They're poison. You know what? I'm going to say these are slightly special uh, um, good berries. Uh, you gain four, te- or, yeah, four temporary hit points that will last until used. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, do, uh, do I guess I do know these are good berries. These, these are delicious. You've never had good berries? Have I ever eaten a poisonous berry? Yes. Would I eat one again? No. I mean, yes. give me 15 minutes. I'm going to feel great. Keep trying to tell them that they're not poisonous. You took mine. Oh, uh, you want some of these ones? Would you like a few of mine? That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, so I'll eat three of mine and give one to Raven. Okay. Well, you have four as well. Kai, you have two. Yeah, you can just take them. I'll give them back to Raven. Yeah. Don't have use for poisonous berries. <laughs> so you guys just... are going to be crying later when you have the shits. The shites. That's just three <laughs> temporary hit points. Yep, three okay. temporary hit points. It'd be four for you. One for me, one from Vol, and the two you had normally. Oh, I didn't I guess she was given one to me. Sorry. Temporary hit points, so meh. But... Did we uh, have any more visits from our friend last night? I'm assuming this is where these came from. You're all in on it. You know, we all saw her, did you not? Right, the tree people. Let's fuck with me. Right. Tree person. I mean, uh-huh. I'm down for fucking with Bower as often as humanly possible. But yeah. not in this instance. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Anyway, no, I didn't see her. I was, uh, went to bed and that was it. <clears throat> yeah. She she stayed quiet. She didn't come out at all. <laughs> well, to, um, let's get to it. I'm gonna uh, go up to the tree, um, just before we leave and say goodbye, Pecan. Um, stepping out of the tree, uh, Orelton, the charm overwhelms you again as you see her. Uh, she steps out and gives you a big hug. And she goes, thank you for the name. You're welcome. And thank you uh, for the berries. She <laughs> waves at Orelton and a little wave to Raven as well. Uh, and then she makes what uh, Vala, we're going to go with you on this based on your background. You recognize to be what you can only imagine is kind of a rude gesture to Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> He's just shell shocked the fact that somebody came out of a fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> he effectively stepped out of the tree, fl- like hugged one of you, gave like waved and smiled at two of you, and then just flipped off Kaya. Um, <laughs> I throw my pack on so my shoulder far. and walk past Kaya and go, "Told you so." Just gonna start walking. Now, to be fair, you guys are kind of shit people. Um, and to you, Vala, um, Pecan whispers, watch out for him. And then steps back into the tree. Mm. I was already watching out for him. <laughs> Z snap. Um, <laughs> anyways. And Pecan steps into her pecan tree. 
that does not have pecans on it. <laughs> does not have pecans. <laughs> nowhere has Sorry, pecans more specifically, on. pecan steps into pecan's tree. There you go. <laughs> Which is uh, not a pecan tree. Uh, cool. Uh, continuing on for today, uh, Raven, we'll let you make your survival check for the first half of the day. We'll kind of go through this a little bit quicker, uh, unless something occurs. 19. 19. Okay, continuing on here. Um, It is kind of nice having a character with a 20 passive perception. Um, (laughs) I can rely on certain things. Okay, and for the, you guys, rest for lunch? Uh, Nothing yet. That's... um, Continuing on, let's make a survival check for the second half of the day. Uh, and also, Kai is going to be again looking out for anything usable in any brew. Uh, 17. 17? Awesome. Perfect. Let's go uh, nature check for brewing stuff. Uh, what is it? Nature or medicine? I don't know. 11. Uh, 11. It it doesn't uh, make any difference to me. They're straight rolls. Yeah, you get a couple more like hop trimmings. You're kind of learning what to look for. Um, uh, we'll say actually that would be like a thirteen. We're, we'll say your your proficiency in brewer supplies leads to you knowing what to look for to use in brews. Get a couple more trimmings of like different hops, um, a few odd berries and whatnot. Um, Vala, uh, you do you look over the the mushrooms you got the previous day? Mm-hmm. Um, with those, I'm just going to let you know, kind of as like as the day goes, and you're looking over like the herbs and stuff you've gathered, stuff for your uh, healer's kit. Do you have a he- healer's kit? Yeah, um, yes, yes. Yeah, if you don't, I would say through regularly gathering uh, herbs and supplies, uh, as well as your week in the camp helping at Ben's healing hut. Um, you do would have one, uh, but spending some time kind of going over the properties, the mushrooms you found are clearly magical in some way, um, but you're not sure. Um, we get to the next night. I'm assuming you guys use a similar uh, sleeping order. Or do you want to change things up to specifically have a particular in uh, encounter with anybody? Um, as we're getting set up and once night happens, um, I'd like to just talk to Vala. Okay. Hey, um, so this kind of came into a thing last night and I just want to make sure you're aware of it so I don't suffer any more bruises. Yes, I was confused at uh, all of your coloring. I didn't want to offend you. No, he scared the shit out of me, and I whopped him one in the face. That's just, those are the bruises. The little ones are me. Uh, I mean... It'll make more sense once he explains it. Go ahead. Do you think? So, um... Let me ask. Can you... Can you see in the dark? No. No, I'm human. Would you like to? I mean... Say yes. Of course. Okay, and I just want to double check right now. Is do we have a fire already? Is it dark? I'm assuming it's pitch black. I, I would say as you guys make camp, it's starting to get dark. Okay. Um, and so you would have built up a fire a little bit. Okay. But it, it's to the point like the darkness is set in enough that if you beat Vala off into the trees a little bit, it would be dark. Okay. Okay. It's a weird sentence. If yeah, you I know, right? Vala <laughs> into the trees. I know, right? Where are you taking me? Okay, so before we get there, I just need you to hold my hand. Um, I, uh... I want you to make a persuasion check with <laughs> disadvantage as you walk away from... Okay. Hey, follow me into these sketchy-ass trees. Also hold my hand. hand. Hold my hand. Uh, uh, that is an eight. I'm going to let Vala do with this what she wants. But, okay. And uh, noticeably, as uh, you guys start walking a little bit away from a camp, uh, Raven does keep like checking over his shoulder, looking back towards camp. 
uh, I'm I'm gonna stop and say, Raven, you have to explain to me what's going on. I'm not going to go off in propriety, dropping off into some forest alone with some man. You have to understand that. I, I do. Um, so you know I mentioned I'm really good in the dark? I know this sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to make it sound like that. Um, let me put it better. Oh, I so become invisible in the dark. Um, what? Those that need dark vision or that have dark vision can see in the dark. They can't see me. Oh, okay. All right. And I want you to be able to witness that and, and trust in my abilities without having to hit me on accident like the other two have. Oh, all right, I'll, um... If it makes you feel better, I will stand in front and you can just hold on to my back. Uh, oh, all right, I'll, I'll follow you. Okay. Okay. And I guess we'll walk into the dark air, dark vision range and then I will just reach over and touch her hand and cast dark vision. You still feel him there, but as he casts it, like, color fades from your vision, and uh, being right, like, in front, like, him being right in front of you with your hand on him, you can tell there's kind of, like, a blur, like, Gaussian effect uh, where he is, where that black and white color kind of fades together, um, but he kind of disappears from your vision. She's gonna, like, pull her hand away. And then reach back out and softly touch. Yep, I'm still here. Uh. That's impressive. I, um. Well, thank you for showing me. Uh, I'm. Now I'm curious as to how the others, uh. How the others found out. Well. Oh, Relton <laughs> woke me up. But uh, when I opened my sleeping bag, he didn't see me. And he started poking and kept poking because he thought it was funny. Yes, all right, yes. Um, unfortunately, with Kaya, that one's my fault. I uh, forgot that uh, he might not be able to see me and woke him up. And, I mean, instinctively, he's going to punch, so... <laughs> And you let him hit you? Well, I mean, between you and me, he's not the strongest. <laughs> uh, well, this... Will my... Will I be able to see the dark forever now? Uh, it lasts about eight hours. Oh, um... Okay. Even if I go to sleep? Yep. Right, I... Uh, this is... This is wonderful. I... I'm very impressed. Shall we, shall we head back to the others where I can actually see you? Yeah. I let's... feel strange let's head speaking back to... blindly into the forest. <laughs> yeah, I hope uh, Pecan 2 isn't around to see that interaction. That's Cashew. I oh, guess... It's Cashew. <laughs> <laughs> we'll head back to the camp. Okay. Um, walk back. I... Uh, Kaya and Orelton have kind of finished setting up camp for the day. Uh, who keeps drawing directions on my maps? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I, I appreciate it. I need it because I keep like, double checking my directions. And, but I keep going back and somebody keeps drawing directions on my maps. <laughs> we'll never tell. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys have finished setting up camp. Uh, go through. Are you keeping the order in the watch the same? Yeah. Unless somebody else wants to change it up. I'm good I would just like to be at the same, like, trading off with Orelin at some point. Okay. Good. Yeah, so Fala, then Orelin, then uh, Raven, and Kaya. Um, let's see. I'm going to run through. Uh, do one sec. Okay. 
Night Pass is pretty uneventfully. Um, Kaya, when you awake, there is a similar cold burning sensation on your shoulder that happened, uh, I believe, about a week previously. Uh, and as you kind of wake up and look at it, like there's that dark anti glow is receding again, and with it, the cold, burning pain fades as well. Uh, make a just straight intelligence check. Is it, so that burning pain, is it like bad, or is it like the the fading feeling of, of like after you've been slapped, like after the initial pain? Mm-hmm. It feels like slow... somebody, like for an example you'll get, it feels like somebody took a piece of dry ice and just slapped you in the chest with it. Okay. Like... It didn't hold it against you, but just like hit you with it. And it's that like freezing, burning feeling that just, that's what wakes you up and it immediately starts to fade. But yeah, give me that just straight intelligence check. Four. Four. Okay. It hurts. That hurts. I don't remember. I guess it's my turn. You ready to go? Yep. You okay? Yep. All right. Sometimes I will get random chest pains that, ah, you know. You know. You ever we, get those? Uh, no, I can't say I have. Like you know, when when it feels like. You got this like solid pain in your chest and like you breathe in and it hurts even worse and you feel I like you're going to die. Can't say that I've ever yeah, felt that. Okay. Well, but you know, maybe that was the best of us. You should check with Vala in the morning. Nah, that's fine. Are you, are you sure? Yeah. It seems pretty serious. Like the chest is. So what's happened? Where have you been looking? <clears throat> um, I mean, just all around the coast. There's not much going on, but you know, I, I okay. like to keep my eyes to to the trees. Any any tree people? Uh, not tonight. No. Good. All right, Gaia, you will watch uh, beyond your uh, we're gonna call heart attack <laughs> <laughs> as you've described it to oh, be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gonna go by. Uh, y'all awake? <laughs> oh, more ASMR noises. <laughs> Again, speaking of ASMR, I'm gonna need the uh, clip of just Raven and Vala's conversation there. I'm just gonna edit out all of the explanatory parts. <laughs> it's just gonna be, I need you to follow me. I hold her hand and lead her into the dark. <laughs> I reach over and touch her. Look, we don't. Wow, we're too early impressive. on into a fanfic that needs to spin Wow, that's need impressive. To spin <laughs> like, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna make my own little oh. highlight reel. That needs to be our next, next time on Easy to Spell. <laughs> and it just looks like it's Raven and Vala going off, and as people get to it, it'll be sounds it'll good. Be fantastic. We're also gonna need to censor this whole bit explaining the joke. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna get here and just be. <laughs> Uh, we're just like all laughing <laughs> Great. better write it down uh, writing down something else uh, uh, oh. go ahead interact amongst yourselves for a moment as I just need to write something before I forget so about how far away do you think we are from folks I mean I gotta think it's another f- four days it's kind of like where we uh, washed up, isn't it? Somewhere around here. Yeah, this looks oh, you're right. pretty familiar. It should be pretty close. Yeah. Speaking of which, Vala, you've been taking notes, as it were? Yes, quite quite a few. i um, been documenting some of the plants along the way as well. Um, and I think it... I think it best that we... Um, keep track of any of the ironwood trees we see along the way. So if you 
notice one. Feel free to point it out to me. I'd like to make an identification of those. Sure. But I meant, like, geographically. Because, I mean, oh, that's yes. what we're doing out here. Yes, of course. Yes. To the yeah, best I of my abilities. And, and uh, Raven, I think tonight you may need to help me go over those notes. I know that you have a, a keen sense of these. Yeah, absolutely. Slums. You guys, uh, gonna go back into the forest? <laughs> no. Okay. Just a one-time thing, then. Gotcha. One and done. Wasn't that great? <laughs> Certainly better than anything that would come from you, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure that we'll never know. she saw something she's never seen before. Probably would have scared me away, too, man. Probably. I'm not sure I saw it. to see it. <laughs> She'd be lucky to see it. Uh, I'm pretty sure she has uh, enlarged. The spell enlarge. Huh. Fair enough. Oh. You got me there. <laughs> anyway. Kai, anyway. How, how are you feeling? Great. That pain go away? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pain. Not a problem. What yeah. pain? Uh, just nothing. No real big, no big deal. Just I mean, occasionally in my chest, I get a, you know, just a, just a, like, you know, like, it almost feels like your ribs being crossed and you breathe in deep and it and it hurts. No, I'm pretty sure I've never felt that before in my I life. I have to die. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, sit right. down. And then she's always going to go over and try and like assess what's wrong with him and check to make sure he doesn't have a heart attack or whatever medical Trash things. Style. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So I guess what you're going to end up seeing are uh, just checking around, listening. I'm assuming, are you listening to like his heart rate or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. So as you're kind of inspecting, you are going to see the, there's the handprint, I believe, on his left shoulder. Um, and it's just, it's black. Um, and... Looking at it closer, it it looks like there might be something inscribed inside that handprint. Kaya, what is this? You know, it's a tattoo. You got it in prison. What does it say? Uh, just some mumbo jumbo about, uh, Basically, when, when you're in prison, you end up with, in a gang. And uh, basically, we, we had a whole lot of choices in ink. It was black or black. And, uh, you know, on the inside, they just, instead of, uh, you know, leaving a little bit of space, they just carved in a little harder. So that's more scar than it is actual, like, you know, ink. And, uh, but yeah, anyway, it's just some mumbo jumbo about uh, basically uh, through thick and thin, you're with the gang, um, blood in, blood out, you know, things like that. Can I see if I can read it? Uh, yeah, let's see. What I'm looking at what languages you know, you cannot. Okay. Hmm. I probably can't either, but I'm going to ask if I can. Yeah, let's, uh, you've got... You cannot. Can I read it with the helm? Oh, what an interesting <laughs> question you had. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I was hoping you forgot about it, honestly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, like, activating the well. helm of comprehending languages. Um, you do know that as part of uh, casting a spell, to be able to actually read a language, you have to be able to touch the uh, what it's written on for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to nonchalantly do that while I'm doing my my checkup. Okay. Pretend like I'm uh, checking like, his heart rate. I'm gonna like every time you stay on it too long, he's gonna be like, "Okay, that's enough." Like try uh, to brush your hand away. Just it's, it's not 
least a, uh, mo- a minute. I will say it is not just like the tattoo. She just has to be touching you for a minute. You are technically what it's inscribed on. You are the material on oh, which it is written. Uh, I will need a, oh, I, probably deception check from Vala here. Uh, All right. And I'm going to say a perception check from... Uh, Wouldn't it be insight? Uh, I'd say probably insight, right? Yeah, yeah uh, insight, insight. Oh, Not that it matters, because they're both the same. 21. Uh, that's you kind of like, you're like, eh. And um, I will say at one point, you just managed to like uh, hold on to his wrist and you're like checking his pulse and checking something. Uh, and the language kind of flutters across and just shifts that you can understand it. You're not sure what language it is. Um, but it is an inscription that reads, this one born to Ithis be. Marked for death if of Maldus speaks, and then a number uh, below it, um, and the number is forty-six. I mean, you didn't lie. That sounds like blood in, blood out to me. Um, then go ahead and make an intelligence check as well. This is something uh, you've seen like this uh, tattoo before, where it says forty-six is kind of like a larger rune. It looks like a smaller tattoo within the tattoo itself. 16. 16? Okay. Yep, that's what you get. Okay. This one blank Ithis? One more time, uh, sorry. Uh, this one born to Ithis B. I-T-H-I-S. Marked for death if of Maldus speaks. M-A-L-D-I-S. And the number is 46. Okay. I'm no, not no, going sorry. to. Sorry, I, I bought it. This is my own 26. The number is 26. Okay. I'm not going to mention it at all. Uh, but I am going to ask Kaya, how old are you? 27. Yes, 27. Twenty-seven. Oh, all right. Um, I don't believe you've had a heart attack, but if you do feel these pains again, let me know when you feel them so that I can actually check and see what they are. Yeah, don't sure. be stupid. Come on, me. Yes, you. You're probably the most precipitous person here. Well, David, do me a favor and roll a D one hundred. Does that mean he precipitates? <laughs> 40. Okay. okay. Nothing happens. All right. Well, shall we get going? Um, okay. Let's continue. Continue on. Uh, Raven, go ahead and make a survival check for me. Let's go. Sorry, I need to map out we've gone. Uh, they will put you. Here. No. First survival check. Six. Six? With a, it uh, was a natural one, I will say that. It was a natural one. Right. Oh, no, you still have advantage. You have, you're still oh, in okay. an area. Uh, this fun. one will be an advantage. The next one won't, because this will be you passing the position where you actually came from. Nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, you still don't get lost. That's uh, um, you get to the point where you're to the base of um, the large cliffs uh, where you could originally like left your co-passengers uh, and made camp. Um, you it takes you a little bit longer. This is going to put you out like the evening of the seventh day, where you might have been earlier in the day. Uh, it just took you a little bit longer this time around. Um, extending your journey a bit. For the second half of the day, go ahead and make another survival check. Okay. Also, I still want to look out for the any markings on the trees when we get closer oh, to the forest. Yeah, and stuff, uh, so. yeah, make a... And this is you kind of going up along the cliff this time instead of along the beach. Uh, you've seen most of the beach. It's beach. This gives you kind of a better view. Okay. Um, I would like to see how many uh, ironwood trees we come across throughout the day. 
Uh, like are they uh, in the hundreds? Are they lots? Are they two or three, et cetera? Um, overall, now that you kind of know what you're looking for, I don't know that you had actually seen an ironwood tree, like a living ironwood tree, um, since you'd gotten here. Uh, you see maybe two or three um, in a day of looking. Like this isn't like they're not super common, but you are also like walking along the outskirts. Um, and it does seem that it, they always seem to be the oldest tree around. Okay. Amongst these trees. And so... I don't see shit, by the way. Nothing? Okay, and give me a survival check for your second half of your day. This one's not an advantage. This one's a straight roll. Uh, this one is an 18. 18. Um, okay. You guys making your way along into the evening. The top of the cliff. Anybody else that wants to make a perception check is welcome to as well. Um, well you get up the... Ten. Ten. What did you say, Will? Oh, I was asking myself why I put my dice away. Nothing important. Okay. Um, Eighteen. I just reach kind of the top of the cliff, and uh, Raven, you're mostly focused on just kind of leading, getting the right direction, especially as the cliff kind of begins, continues to grow and grow. Uh, at this point of the day, like looking over, you're probably a good six, seven hundred feet up. Like there are some points that were like pretty sheer, like elevation jumps. Uh, as the cliff just rises to the ground before. Ahead of ways, you can see where it kind of j starts lowering back down. It was definitely steeper on this side than it was, than it will be going back down. Um, but you're a couple hundred feet up. Um, moving through. Orelton, with your perception check, uh, as you guys are going through, uh, not quite dark, but definitely getting into the later in the day, uh, as the sun's most of the way through its descent. Um, uh, off to the side in the woods, you see there's a large, there's a, a few large trees. And you notice this because there are like three or four iron, of the ironwood trees, uh, all kind of close around. Uh, one of them's kind of shaped a little weird. And then you look, and there's actually what seems to be um, a large statue, almost fully encompassed in vines. Hey, here's uh, something we can put on a map. And I'll point and start walking towards it. Uh, and it's about 50 feet back. Um, and it is like, like it's fully encompassed uh, in a razor vine. If you get close, you can see. You were only able to notice it was a statue because parts of like, um, there seems to be like a drawn sword as part of the statue and the blade of the sword is mostly uncovered. Um, what you initially thought was another ironwood tree is like, uh, what looks to be a uh, manacled foot. It stands about 20 feet tall. Um, I'll take one of the daggers that uh, we found a couple days back, and I'll just start hacking off razor vine at the base and see if I can't clear it. Well, you start uh, cutting and pulling uh, vine off. Go ahead and make... Uh, let's just... Let's do it. Like, make an attack roll for me. This combination accuracy and not getting your hands slid open 11 11 uh actually that's the dc was 10 um just to to not cut yourself while cutting through these vines uh, but you start able to clear uh the rest of you doing anything you're just kind of watching as a relton uh, i'm just going to keep an eye out can look for anything else around the surrounding area that's interesting while he gets that stuff cut off uh, um yeah, go ahead and make an investigation or or perception check. You're looking, Kai, what are you doing? Um, I I, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of just keep an eye out, looking at just the surrounding area. Nineteen, by the way. Um, you kind of start looking around and like now that there's the sign of an actual constructed a constructed element um, kind of go through and there's some weird shapes that you just assumed were like over brush that was overgrown in razor vine and you kind of clear through a little bit of it and realize that there's like a stone bench that's been cracked here and some like stone tiles on the ground kind of everywhere it seems like at one point this was actually like a built up 
position. Um, and sorry, Kai, what did you say you were working on? You're just keeping uh, an eye out as well. Just keeping an eye. Okay. Um, you're kind of in. So, uh, Vali, you're moving through, and like the, you realize that it was a position, that, like an area that was constructed a little ways out, probably 20, 30 feet in every direction from this this statue, and then it kind of stops and just goes off into the woods there. Um, seems to be a, a somewhat isolated point. Uh, Relton, you start kind of cutting through and you clear off the base somewhat. Um, and as you kind of start cleaning up off the legs, uh, you realize that between the two legs, there's an opening. There's a cloak of this figure as you start clearing further and further away that comes down the back and connects to the ground. Um, in that space where the legs and cloak all kind of meet, um, you clear away and there is a door built onto the statue, like recessed about a foot back. Does it look like it would open to nothing if I opened it? Like it's uh, all on the inside of the cloak is how I'm en envisioning this. Uh, so uh, like you start looking at it and there's probably a good four feet. Um, like it's a large statue. And so it's set like halfway back on the legs. Um, and then where the cloak fans backwards and billows, there'd be a space. Um, hmm. And... It's just a large door. The figure is still covered probably from like the knee up. It would You'd have to like climb it and spend probably a good portion of a day uh, cleaning it. Huh. Uh, can I see any like indicative markings to see like is there a plaque that says statue of or dedicated to established? Um, let's see. What? Uh, yeah at the foot kind of the small pedestal it's about six inches tall that the whole thing stands on there seems to be a placard what languages do you speak uh celestial common draconic and orcish oh yeah. you do not understand what's written but it does seem familiar it seems to match the script that was written on the tablet that you guys had found hmm. before. We best not to fuck with this then. Hey, Vala. Mm hmm. You yes. got that uh, helm, right? Wanna come yes, check I do. this out for me? Alright. I'll come over and lay my hands on it, sit for a minute. Um, cool. uh, after a minute, it shimmers into like all the letters like kind of flip individually into recognizable uh, runes um, and it says uh, here lies Galalwe he who stood against the darkening wood hmm. Raven yeah I believe I'm translating this right. Would you like to come over here and look at this with me? Yeah, sure. All right, come over and take a look at it. He says, here stands Glalway. I forgot the second half. Oh. He who stands he against the dark, or he who stood against the darkening wood. And I share that. Sounds like a tomb. Galale. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna assume that name does not sound familiar to me. Uh, no, it would not. Okay. Are you continuing to clear vines from the tree? Are you, or from the statue? I mean, I don't want to climb all the way up it, especially if it's gonna take a day or so. But I'll clear as much clear as much as I can. Okay. Um, you would be able to if you wanted to. You could, uh like climb up through the vines to clear like the face or if you there were particular like areas of the statue you wanted to get a closer look at um it does he does seem to be pointing a sword out to the ocean just from the shape you can see um i'll see if i can't clear both of those the face and the sword actually the face and the sword. It's an identifiable okay. weapon yeah it is uh easy enough and it is like massive the statues like i said a good 20 feet, tall, yeah. 20 feet tall um, yeah. and so uh, the sword actually is probably 
uh, it seems in the statue it's meant to look kind of like a short sword, um, but it is about the same size as your great sword, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, huh. you're, you clear it, and it... Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check as you clear it. What did everyone do to beyond? Uh, 21. 21. Okay. Uh, you clear it, and uh, part of the pro like as you're like going, getting a grip, readjusting your grip, um, and kind of clearing through, uh, it actually shifts a little bit. Um, like, it seems to be set into the hand of the statue, um, and not fully part of the statue itself. Uh, can I see what material it's made of? Does it look like it's it's made of stone, or is it a sword that's placed in his hand? Um, clearing through, it does seem to be made of stone. Um, it's not sharp, and you kind of are wiggling it, and it shifts, and you pull a little bit, and it's sheathed. It's a sheath. It is a massive stone sheath to this blade. Oh, that's sick. Uh, and you pull it back a little bit, and it takes a bit like there's a lot of like sediment and stuff that's built up from rain and wind and dirt and everything. And, it, and there's a pile of dust that kind of clears and falls down on you, Bala. This is as you and Raven are kind of reading through. Um, and there is a, Sorry. Sorry. Uh, a oh. blade that has like you look closer and it has like a wooden grain to it. Now that's crazy. Uh, I'll just slide it off a little bit farther. The entire thing looks to be made of like polished wood. Yeah, and it uh, getting closer, it feels like metal but as the grain of wood. This is what you're assuming is a sword cut from iron, iron wood. wood. And there are runes that are unfamiliar to you inlaid in the sign. Well, I mean, we gotta have this, right? What are I you will doing? relate to everybody else. This is an actual sword, it looks like. What? Probably, like, yeah, and I'll slide the sheath off far enough that, like, everybody below me can see it. Like, this is, I guess, ironwood. It's hard like metal. Should we be taking that? I mean, it's a big dope sword made out of ironwood. How can you not? I, I mean, if this is a grave, do you feel comfortable desecrating a grave? The dead are the lucky ones, man. He's not using it. Yeah, what's the point of leaving it for him to use? I mean, I, just the whole he st who stood against the darkening wood. Maybe well, it could be some we dark wood. We can cut it with that. Yeah. And it can be we who stood against the dark wood. Can you clear uh, his face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll slide the what? sheath back on and go up to clear his face. Oh, um, climb back up. I. Uh, Give me an athletics check. This is just climbing without getting cut. You're getting into kind of thicker vines and everything. Uh, 13. Okay. Uh, let see. I accept this. Let's see. Hmm. Why would they leave such a sword? I don't understand. Why do you bury people with their stuff? Probably the same reason. Out in the open, out in the plain. I mean, when you bury somebody, at least they're six feet under. You can't easily get to them. Like, this is just... Uh, usually don't make for it. Robbers. Or heroes. No? All right, yeah, I didn't. I wouldn't buy it either. Uh, I have it. Somewhere around here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's will say that you were successful. If I, don't, if I don't know the DC of my own shit, then... <laughs> make it up, man. Yeah. Probably only like ten. Um, okay, you climb up and begin clearing, and as you kind of uh, cut through, um, it's worn down, um, but you can kind of tell. Uh, it just set like some of the details. It's not. It's actually been somewhat protected by the vines that encircle it, uh, and you cut, begin cutting through until you're able to clear the face. So you can see it's kind of. Uh, covered in a large stone hood. Um, and it actually looks kind of familiar to you, this face. Um, trying to put it, go ahead and make an intelligence check. I'm so good at those. 
five. Five. I can't like enough of the detail is kind of worn away over time and from the elements that it like it looks familiar, but it's just escaping you. I'll like lean back, like probably hanging off a shoulder or neck and be like Does he look familiar to you guys? I swear I've seen him before. Take a look. Uh, yeah, intelligence checks from anybody that wants to. It was almost uh, a net. Raven, you at, uh, uh, actually, Raven, you get to roll this with advantage. Okay, good. Specifically. Fucking crazy. Eight. Eight. Four. Follow? Sixteen. Sixteen. Four. He, like you, well, you kind of, you kind of looking at it, you, um, a little ways away, but it's a large statue and you're able to get closer. Um, pretty perceptive, so distance isn't really much of an issue. Um, and it clicks. It looks a lot like Raven. And we're going to end there tonight. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pissed! Um, it literally went 22 um uh, awesome thank you guys for playing thank you everybody for hanging out cliffhangers um, cliffhangers ah. awesome we really hope to see you guys again next week uh i'm having a lot of fun you know messing with all of you guys hopefully i'm pulling some heartstrings yes have a wonderful week again thank you so much to sirenscape uh, it would like it's not the same game playing online le- online like this without that ambient noise. Even if I left the uh, daytime, birds running too long. Uh, have a great week. Next time on Easy to Spell, here lo- lies Galalway. In memoriam, we of the Highbolt Clan will bear his name in our tales, so as to never forget the sacrifice he made to protect our home. Highbolt. I know that name. A uh, huge wolf is just watching the party. I will s- stand up and make myself just as big as possible and just like Drunk. stare right back at him and blink. Coming out of the darkness, you see an owl bear. There's a large arrow carved into one of the trees, um, and below it, there is a knife stabbed into the tree with a small bag. Uh, The note says, uh, continue on this path for two days. We have a place you'll be safe. Do not cut living wood for fire and do not hunt for more than you need. We'll explain. And then it is signed, Mytholai. Looking about, you look up and there is a woman. You've been reaching out to the father. He's heard you, child of the wood. Don't trust Renault. There will be a reckoning. I will, like, put a hand on her shoulder. She goes, finally. I found you. Darkness overtakes your vision. Orelton is dead.